Arlene Southern, who said something to the likes, there must have been something missing in the transcripts. An infusion of music with rhythms and complexities, such as found in black folk music or 20th century jazz. Um, I hope today to set uh, an environment, a place um, where we can see what it was like a little over 200 years ago. Philadelphia was regarded as the cultural and intellectual capital of black America at the time when 85% of blacks were enslaved. Here in Philadelphia, the black population would grow 10% by 1920 and the, it's very democratic, see, was, was, was very challenged by the arrival of 3,000 or more refugees from Haiti as Creole slaves. After the Haitian Revolution, you could see Quakers here in Philadelphia with French gentlemen with the latest fashion and from the West Indies, riches, and you can hear debates about the Haitian Revolution itself fueled about what really slavery meant for this young country. This is all while um, Reverend Allen um, and Absalom Jones were working to form the independent black African church. Essentially, Philadelphia would have had creels of color, free blacks, military regiments, commerce, commodities, sugar, similar to New Orleans, um, except this is 100 years before the birth of jazz in New Orleans. And so this music is meant to showcase that, that, that diversity that, that was in Philadelphia at that time, um, that diversity that, that was founded here in Philadelphia of all these different cultures, all these different languages, all these different dialects. So this is meant to show code switching through the rhythmic, rhythm that would have come through Afro-Cuban rhythms, Cuba, Haiti. And so um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail with each different rhythm, but each piece is meant to show um, a different rhythm um, I mean, Martinique, we take French islands, um, we go Haiti, we go to Cuba, we go to Puerto Rico. And so what the infusion of, of this is, is that it's an infusion of, of classical arrangements of Francis Johnson with all these different rhythms. And so I hope today you enjoy, this will be code switching.
So that was um, Bingham's Cotillion, and that featured the bomba. Um, he was somewhat, I guess we can't say, you know, we like to say people have been found or they've been discovered. Um, but 15-year-old Johnson would have been performing at a place called the, the Exchange Coffee House. And, and this is where he met his first publishers that would have been starting to publish his music. Um, th these would have featured dances that would have been the French um, Quadron Cotillion um, and a number of other of square dances, um, which would, you know, be, in, of course, the forerunner of the American square dance. Um, one um, of his, his published, and once all his arrangements were published, fans would make up their own arrangements, similar to this. And so it wouldn't be a standard way to write the music, you know, so we took the score in the form that it was, in, it was, and we made up our own arrangement. And so this is what um, some of the musicians similar w would have been doing. Of course, it would not have been in this style because some of these rhythms were not available at the time. And so that was being of Scotillion. Next, we're gonna play, um, the first is, is really an intriguing piece called Battle of New Orleans. Um, Johnson was in the third company of Washington Guards um, in which he would have been with George Willick Jr. Um, employed under the direction of Francis Johnson. And this was much of a tribute to the Battle of 1812. Um, this battalion included free black men and it was the second largest ensemble um, directing, um, excuse me, first um, largest music ensemble defending New Orleans, one of two black ensembles. Um, these activities would have happened during 1814 and 1815 and would mark um, the, the, big, the beginning of music making of American Creoles um, that a uh, hundred years later would eventually give birth to the jazz. So it's this very interesting lineage in terms of what the Creoles who came here to Philadelphia and also would have came to New Orleans. And so it's a very interesting tradition. So we're going to be begin this with the Battle of New Orleans.
How fun was that? And so next we're going to feature two pieces because um, um, Matt Davis, um, who was a really, um, we, we really worked side by side with a lot of these manuscripts and um, um, our guitarist Matt Davis. And it was really helping to, you know, as a trombone player, you don't play as much harmony as you, you would like to. And so um, one of the things that, that really Matt would really help to sort of, you know, help out was, you know, where are these chord progressions that we're adding to these scores that don't exist? And so a lot of that goes to Matt Davis, and, and we went to Waverly, and we had the opportunity to, to do to sort of demo some of these things. And one thing we had that we did, this is the second piece in the manuscript, is an adagio. And we found something odd in adagio that it was both in D major and D minor at the same time. And so when we when we when we formed it, we did it in minor, and and one of um, one of the uh, you know the people who had the opportunity to see uh, said, well, why don't you just do it in both? And so we decided to do that. And so the first one we're going to play is, is, is we're calling it Adagio in D major. And then the second one is Adagio in D minor. Enjoy.
So that was major. So now we're gonna we're gonna um, we, we decided to slow this one down um, and give it more of a swing feel. And so this is this is um, would be um, a swing pattern on this. And this is um, same piece in a minor. So I need to ask, how many people are minor people in here? You like the minor better? Raise your hand. How many people are major people? Ah, it's about 50-50, right? We, we got to, you know, I, didn't, I should have put an official poll up to see who, you know, what, what, what we prefer, what type of mood we're in. So, um, so, so that was the, the three pieces that we did out of the manuscript, and um, the, it's probably the first time these have ever been played public. Um, so, so it was a really great honor to be able to, to, to dig into the manuscripts. Um, another piece that we found inside the Battle of New Orleans was that we found that um, Francis Johnson also gave um, sound effects. And so um, we found that in the scores it would say horses galloping and the musicians were, were expected to make that type of sounds. And so as we get later into it, we're going to make some sound effects and we're going to make some noise too and you're going to see that, so we'll get into that. Um, so now we're going to get to recognition march of the independence of Haiti. And this is um, one of the, the very, very interesting um, pieces of history in terms of the idea of Haiti and how it influenced us in Philadelphia, how it influenced this country. And one of the things that Francis Johnson had, a, had an opportunity to do was to write this for actually the free independent state to return free people, blacks of color, to Haiti. So this march was not so much for the, for the freedom of the Haitian people, is that because it was believed that Haiti would be the best place for um, people of color to go to, to have an independent state. And so obviously this, this all fell apart, it didn't, didn't work out, but this was, this was meant to be, um, to get black people of color, Americans of color, organized um, through the Haitian Immigration Society of, of 1824, and Francis wrote this march so that the black population would go return to Haiti to have a free independent state. So that, that's what this march is for. All right, we're gonna play the, the, um, the recognition march of the independence of Haiti.
Um, at, at this time, we have really two special guests. Um, and at this time, um, this is just one of these um, pieces that you can't really say much. You just got to experience it. And so um, I'm going to bring up um, Latasha at this time, and we're going to play um, The Grave of the Slave.
kind is that heaven could save the brave of the weary is welcome and bliss it is to the captive is freedom man I also want to give a shout out to Matt Davis for that beautiful arrangement. Um, we we, we kind of fought over that one. He said, Matt said, I said, I want to do that. He says, Matt, Matt says, this is my, my cup of tea. And, and Matt really, um, so that's a beautiful arrangement by Matt Davis of The Grave of the Slave. Um, now, earlier I talked about some of Francis Johnson's innovations. And one of the, the, the really big innovations was sound effects. Sound effects making, making those feel like we're in environments. And so um, there was um, a he would make bird calls, or, or if it was a siren, well, we can hear that now today when we're driving you know, by the cars, but sirens are so sound effects. So this is, this is one that's gonna be a little bit more avant-garde, and that we're gonna hear some flutters, some effects, some, I'm gonna do some weird things on the trombone, he's gonna do some weird things on the saxophone. And this is Johnson's new bird waltz.
So we tried to get some sound effects. I don't, I don't know if we could do quite, you know, Francis Johnson, but we tried to get some things in there that you might not have heard these instruments normally do. Um, at this time, um, you know, I would like to invite my wife out. Um, and so you couldn't do Francis Johnson in a dance concert without having dance. And so, um, and so this is um, Victoria Gallup. And this is in the true sense of a loop, if we had to you know, say it. And so like, like looping, it's, it's just a very short phrase. And each of us have one fragment of the phrase, and we're going to come in at different times. It starts with the piano, bass, and drums. And then the horns come in at the last with the melody that, that's actually on the manuscript. So, um, so I hope you enjoy. This is Victoria Gallup. All right, so we come to the final piece of the, the night, and I'll, I hope you've enjoyed this um, this demonstration of, of the works of Francis Johnson. Um, and, and the goal was simply to, to take a little one piece across his lifetime. And so um, Bingham's Cotillion was the very first piece that was published. Um, we took works from the manuscript um, the, at the Library of Company, and we, we, we reimagined those. And we finally come to, to the final piece, and this is actually by um, 
a, I'm going to call him a partner in crime of his. Um, he would have toured Europe with him. You know, at this time, it's, it's now 1847. Um, Francis Jensen passed. And this is at the time where there were musicians in his band trying to continue his legacy. And these were, these were, these were black men trying to continue his legacy. And so um, Aaron Connor was, was, was he, he also helped Johnson arrange works. Um, Victoria Gallup is one that's believed that, that, that he had a piece to, to, to do in and help him out with that arrangement. And so this, this final one um, is, and another note about this piece is that this is one of the rare waltzes in five. So it's a waltz in five, and so we, we, we really challenged ourselves with this one. <laughs> and so this is, um, you know, and if you don't know, people don't dance in five too much, you know, even to today. And so we, we tried to put a, a new beat that I don't think has ever been played because we're playing um, a Latin beat in five. So I, I called it a Latin Roomba, but, but Pablo got mad at me and said that doesn't work. So, <laughs> so but, 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 um, I did, <laughs> but, um, but we're going to play this final piece. And um, hope you enjoy. And if you know, hopefully, if you have any questions, I'll be in the back and I'll take any questions that you have anything.
Zakai Curtis on piano. Nimrod Speaks on bass. Wayne Smith Jr. on drums. Pablo Batista on percussion. Matt Davis guitar. Todd, Todd Bayshore on alto sax and flute. Lauren Putty White on dance. Latasha Morris on vocals. And I'm, I'm Brent White. Hopefully you enjoyed this set. Have a, have a good night. Come back up. <laughs>